Aloha folks, welcome to Kimo's Own oh, Grinds. Today we're gonna make our crunch wrap, but actually right now we're gonna do a nacho cheese sauce from scratch. You can use the stuff that you find in your stores in the square box, but I find that this is a little bit more creamier and I found this recipe online, So, but we will share that with you. Uh, actually we're gonna do two tablespoons of butter. So right now in a medium pan, so I'll put it about four or five if you have electric, if you have gas, you know, just a medium heat because you're basically going to be melting the butter. Two tablespoons, you know, it doesn't have to be precise, just what you think is two tablespoons. Uh, margarine is not really good with this because uh, you really need, this is the fat. I guess you could use oil if you didn't want to use butter. I've never tried it that way, but you can do it that way. My oven is a little slow, so please bear with us. And once this melts, I have to put in two tablespoons of flour. I'm basically making a roux. Well, now that the butter has melted in our skillet, you can use a saucepan as well. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And basically what you're gonna be doing is making a roux. Um, if you need help making a roux, let us know. We can do that. And you just wanna be able to Get all the lumps out. That's basically what you're doing. You want it to get golden brown. Turn down the heat just a little bit because I think it's too high on my. So this is how a roux works. You basically, you know what a roux is. It's cooking out the flour with the fat that you've chosen. Butter is best. Like again, don't put the margarine in it because it just doesn't work right. Okay, then so. It's almost ready. I'm gonna put a cup of milk in the pan as well, because that's part of our cheese sauce that we have. That's what makes it creamy. So just put that in the thing, in the pan I guess, not really a thing. And then you're gonna do that. And you're just gonna do this. And basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna turn up the fire and you're gonna bring it to a boil. Basically what it is is gonna become a sauce. That way you can add the other ingredients to your dish. And you wanna make sure it stays smooth. You don't want no lumps. Should only take a few minutes. If you need to put on the fan, you can, over your stove. Okay, we've reached it to a boil point. I've also lowered the uh, temperature to our low with my electric stove, of course. You're just gonna add a little bit of salt, not too much. I use Hawaiian sea salt. Uh, anything but iodine salt, my preference, just because it's not good for you. But you can use that if that's all you have. And if it gets a little bit too hot, just because of how electric stoves are, take it off the stove for me. Um, and then we're gonna add eight, ounce, eight ounces of cheese. This you can eyeball, just because, unless you wanna measure it, pre-measure it out before, uh, you can do that. I just add, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of cheese you want. Orange preferably, you can do cheddar, you can do a Fiesta blend, basically, uh, so. You know, that's a Monterey Jack and cheddar thing that has quesadilla in it. So, you know, just to do that part. And you want to basically going to melt the cheese and you're going to add a little bit of, uh, I don't have um, I'm cayenne. I'm just going to use a little bit of chili powder just to give it a little kick. So this is my version of a nacho cheese sauce, but you can use the blocks if you wish. So uh, 
this is it for that. And if you can tell, it's very on the thicker side. It's just melting the cheese, getting it all incorporated. And there is your nacho cheese sauce. Okay, I've made my hamburger, it's ground hamburger, but you can use any kind of protein, chicken, uh, steak, fish, shrimp, but I just used hamburgers for my crunch wraps. All it is is hamburger, it's an 80-20. All I did was drain the fat, put in some onion powder, but you can put fresh onions, some bell peppers if you want, uh, green chilies. You can put in whatever you want to use as a vegetable. Um, I did use dry taco seasoning as well. So I'm going to make our crunchy wraps now. Actually, I'm using an electric skillet just because it's better, but it's about 350, 360. You just put a little bit of vegetable oil. Other, you can use any kind of oil that you have except olive oil because you don't want the flavor of the olive oil to do it. I buy all my tortillas from the store. If you're really good, if you have somebody, you know, um, a Latin store that makes really good fresh tortillas, I recommend that you do that. I just never found one here where I live, but it's okay. I buy the burrito size or the extra large. I'm actually gonna use a couple of different sizes of burritos and uh, a tostada. Tostadas are really easy if you wanna do your own. Uh, actually lard is the best deep frying one, but you could probably put it in an air fryer as well. Uh, if you make your own beans, just follow directions. I just happen to use a can to make mine a little bit more creamier, I do add a little bit of milk. On this, you just put a little bit of beans, spread it out a little bit. They're refried beans. So uh, my dad, he likes that for his lunch. So that's why I always have uh, refried beans on hand. And then I get a tostada. Again, I buy these at the store. They do have some good mass-produced ones. If you know how to make them yourself, that's even greater. Uh, so I put it in the middle like this. The tortillas, you don't have to use flour. You can use whole wheat. You can use any of the vegetable ones. Uh, vegetable wraps is great as long as they're a larger tortilla. I also use sour cream. Just put a little bit, not too much. And that way you can, uh, you know, just spread it out a little bit. And also that cheese that we made earlier, I put a little bit of that on it. So I just spread everything out a little bit. So, you know, if you need to use a knife, please go ahead. That way you have your cheese in it. So it's good like that. Then I use the hamburger. Just put a little bit. Just enough to cover the tostada shell. If you overlap it, that's fine as well. Uh, I also put a little bit of taco sauce, whatever flavor you wish to have. Spicy, mild, medium just to give it a little bit more, uh, you know, depth of flavor. And then I also use, I'm using romaine tomatoes, doesn't matter tomatoes, I just cut up a few, put it in like that. So, and then I buy a bag of shredded lettuce. If you wanna shred your own lettuce, great. But I just, you know, try to cut a little bit of corners, just put a little bit on like that. Okay. And it's because I'm using a whole wheat top. You basically get the small tortillas. They're basically called uh, table tortillas. Some of them are called fajita tortillas, but you want to do a smaller one. You don't want too big because it's basically gonna cover it up the things like this. You press it down a little bit and then you fold it like this. You basically fold in all the edges. So it looks like this when you do it. Um, don't press too hard. It's basically for the, 
you know, you're going to do it like this. So it's going to look like this. It kind of looks like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you flip it over. Now you're going to put it on your hot skillet, your electric skillet, anything like that. And you're going to hear a little bit of sizzle. Now, if you want as a side, if you know how to make Mexican Spanish rice, that's another good side for it, or you can just eat it like that. It just depends on what you want. Um, there's a million recipes online, so just pick the ones that you like. Uh, I usually use my rice cooker. I put chicken stock in it, some green chilies, tomatoes, and I actually use taco seasoning or enchilada sauce. So you can use that as, you know, as a side dish for your crunch wraps. Then you just about two to four minutes to cook it on the side. You basically just kind of brown the side. If you have, um, well, panini press wouldn't really work, but if you have a press where you can, you know, um, if it's a flat surface, you can do that as well. Because I know some people use panini presses there or they have them in their home, so you can do that as well. I just use my electric skillet because it actually does really well. Okay, it's almost done. I'm gonna take it off my griddle. So this is how it looks when it's finished. You want it at least golden brown. Uh, and basically, when you fold it like that and the oil and everything, it actually will kind of glue itself to it. Now I use a serrated knife, but if you don't have a serrated knife like this, you can use a chef's knife, as long as it's sharp and it will be able to cut through to the tostada and everything else. So this is all I do. Careful, because it is hot and there's hot ingredients in there. So. You can also use a pizza cutter too, because I found that to work as well. But I just use a serrated knife. And so it looks like this. This is actually really good if you want to have this for lunch or a snack. It doesn't have to be for dinner, but this one is for dinner. And we just put it on a small plate. Again, you can use, make some Spanish rice for a side. And we will share that recipe with you when, uh, on a later date. Okay, and I'll actually teach you how to make rice in our rice cookers. So uh, thank you for Stopping by, looking at our video, and aloha from Kimo's own rhymes. Aloha, folks. Like this video and subscribe to my channel for notifications. Aloha.